Now I'd like to bring in the mayor of St. Paul, Minnesota, Melvin Carter. Mayor, I want to first get your reaction to these charges against Officer Kim, pa Kim Potter, second degree manslaughter. Well, good morning and thanks for having me on. Uh, obviously, a second degree manslaughter charge uh, isn't as satisfying as something uh, heavier. Uh, Dante Wright is gone forever and there's no one credible who's even pretending that there's an acceptable reason why. Uh, even if we accept uh, that Officer Potter meant to tase him, we still have to ask ourselves the question, is shooting someone with 50,000 volts of electricity a reasonable escalation to a traffic stop that began over expired license tabs? So either way, Dante Wright is dead as a result of Officer Potter's deliberate actions. So yes, a, a, a more weighty charge would be much more satisfying. In the end, though, all of this is up to a jury to decide, and we've already seen how difficult it is to hold an officer accountable for taking a black life. Uh, so I'll long term and ultimately value a conviction for a charge that the prosecution can make stick over an acquittal for a more weighty charge that uh, ends up being thrown out. All of this is happening around your city. Tensions couldn't be higher. I know you put a curfew in place. What else are you doing to keep your community safe? You know, we put a curfew in place the first couple of nights uh, because we see people, uh, frankly, not for the protesters. We have a number of people who are here protesting, uh, making powerful and beautiful statements, peacefully protesting to say that there's no acceptable reason why Dante Wright should be dead. Obviously, our community is continuing to process the trauma of George Floyd's murder, of the, of the trial that we're going through right now. And we have a number of people who need healing spaces to process together, to gather together, and to be able to speak up and exercise their First Amendment rights. So our first goal is to make sure that we're protecting people's rights uh, to peacefully protest. Unfortunately, we also have people who are here to exploit that situation. In St. Paul last year, we saw millions of dollars of damage uh, that uprooted uh, black owned barber shops and neighborhood uh, coffee shops and you know neighborhood grocery stores, the places where our senior citizens rely on for their med medication. And obviously that is a road we cannot ever go down again. And so our goal is to protect the value of lives and livelihoods by ensuring that no one, officer or not, is able to uh, in, inflict unreasonable violence and escalation on our community members. Then how are you gonna do that? What happens next? There is still so much anger. Practically speaking, what does real lasting change look like in your city and state? Uh, I think real lasting change has to happen in our city and state. It also has to happen nationwide. Uh, this is gonna be something that's bigger. We are seeing anger and we should expect anger. When you look at that video, when you look at any of these videos, uh, the only human response uh, is to be angry, is to be traumatized, is to be grief stricken. Uh, and our goal is to invite those people who are resolved to create a better world. Our goal is to invite those people who are full of the energy that they have to get out somewhere and invite them into a process at City Hall, invite them into a process at the state capitol that does think the type of things we've been frankly, shouting about for years. We have to end qualified immunity so that we know that we can hold our officers accountable for actions that fall so far below our level of expectation. We have to figure out how to work more closely with our police departments so that our officers know our communities, that, they, when, that when they encounter somebody like Dante Wright on the streets, they're not scared of him because of who he is or what he looks like, but they're a part of our communities as well. And we have to continue aggressively uh, and proactively supporting that relationship, that critical relationship that has to flow between our officers and our communities. That's the only way it works. Here in St. Paul, we've advanced what we call our community first public safety framework that says we want our officers to have the tools, the resources that they need to respond to our most critical emergencies. We want to have uh, social workers and emergency housing providers and those other types of resources available to respond when someone calls 911 because of some issue of crisis or, 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 or con neighborhood concern. And we also want to make proactive investments in our neighbors and in our neighborhoods so that we can build a public safety system that starts not with responding as soon as possible after something terrible happens, but with the type of proactive investments that can reduce the likelihood that something terrible will happen in the first place.
Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.